Okay, so I'm back in Elite Dangerous Odyssey in the Quest 3. Via virtual desktop, as you can see, I've got FPS VR overlay running at the bottom of the screen there, 72 FPS. I'm on godlike settings um, in virtual desktop, so very high resolution, over 3000 by 3000 per eye. So I'm running this on my RTX 5080 with my Ryzen 5 5800X 3D. All of that is to basically say that this is how it runs anyway. So I've been tweaking, trying to get steady performance within the station. It seems almost impossible, really. I mean, you can see it's running really well at the moment. Let's take off and we'll see what it's like. And I'll also come back in as well, just so you can see that. But um, yeah, it's took a little bit of tweaking. I've been playing it in my Quest 3 and in the Palmax Crystal this afternoon, actually, just to compare the two. Um, there's various things, you know, I mean, it's, <laughs> It's very difficult to pick a favourite, actually. Um, I think, of course, image quality looks better in Palmax Crystal. But to be honest, I think the Quest 3 is also given a fantastic image quality at these settings. Now, I'll go into the Elite Dangerous in-game menu in a moment. Now, the station is probably where it's going to perform the worst. Now we're in space, we should be really, you know, quite consistent. I'm being quite conservative on the settings that I'm using. I mean, that looks stunning. That looks fantastic. Um, but I am being very conservative on the settings I'm using in game, trying to maintain a nice, solid 72 FPS, and it only dips down a little bit in stations. That's the thing. So it's running really well out here. You can see the GPU performance, you know, it's 48% utilization on the GPU side not very high on the CPU side either. If you look at the frame timing graphs, you can see it's fluctuating slightly and I don't want to push things up too much. I could go up to a higher resolution. Let's go into the in-game settings menu so you can see what I'm currently running on anyway. So I started on a baseline of VR high. Now I've gone down, so everything on here is effectively VR high still. I'm using the AMD FSR upscaling on the quality setting. And then HMD image quality is 1.25. Now that's about as high as I can push it. In space, I could probably go higher. In fact, let's give that a try. So let's go up to 1.5. So it'll give a slightly sharper image in the headset. And the way I often test this is looking at the various, uh, you know, the, the hood within the ship. And it looks great anyway. And we've still got plenty of uh, sort of performance headroom here it's just the stations and when you descend onto a planet surface sometimes that can be a bit of a problem as well in terms of performance and you know we're getting up to i've got 16 gigabytes of vram on this card my new card and already you know this game is pushing towards that we've got we're using 13.2 gigabytes of vram i suspect it's going to be a problem in future with this card but um it is what it is this is what i could afford at this moment in time so that's the best i can do um, a few little fluctuations, but this looks incredible in the Quest 3 on Godlike on virtual desktop. Those, that resolution, you know, like I say, over 3000 by 3000 per eye, very high resolution. And it looks great. In the Pimax Crystal, um, it utilizes the eye tracking, as, as I mentioned in my last video. So that makes a big difference in terms of performance. It adds probably somewhere around 20% that you can get away with. And running a similar resolution on that, things do look sharper, even though it's the same sort of render resolution. The fact that the headset display has higher resolution displays, and also the fact it has the mini LED display, so you get those nice, nice black levels as well, that all makes a difference. However, the optics in the Palmax Crystal, they take some getting used to. There's something about the Quest 3, it's just, just really comfortable optically for me. And when I use the Palmax Crystal all the time, I sort of get used to it, but it takes a transition. There's a transition period. I don't know if it's the focal distance, um, like the difference between the two, 
the binocular overlap, there's all these things. I mean, really the Parmex Crystal, I believe, has better binocular overlap than the Quest 3. Quest 3, I noticed when I first got it, the binocular overlap wasn't great. Um, but you sort of get used to it, and I think there's some truth that you do sort of get used to the headset that you use most. Let's go in and request docking anyway. And now just let the uh, auto dock do its thing, just so I don't need to worry about it while I'm making the video. But yeah, I think having tweaked it this far, there's further things I can do, of course. I mean, people recommend Open Composite. I've tried Open Composite in the past. Uh, years ago when I was on different headsets and of course it, it makes it can make a difference to performance and people swear by it um, But if I can get reasonable performance without going through those steps, then That's where I'm happy to settle on really um, Yeah, so as we go through the mailbox there it does drop down. It's always done that though. It has always done that so it's still not solid in stations, but I think this is pretty much the best I can do. Oh, and actually I have gone up in the uh, HMD image quality, didn't I? So that's probably, that probably explains it a little bit. But maybe this is the better way, because a little bit stuttering as you enter the station isn't the end of the world. Now we've landed, it is dropping down though. Um, it depends, we're not in stations a huge amount of time, and it seems to be handling this frame rate quite well. Let's go back into the settings menu anyway, and we'll uh, just change that back to 1.25 HMD image quality. While I'm in here as well, let's just go through some of this stuff. So like I say, I started on a preset of VR high. Pretty much everything else is down to that preset. Um, I may have turned some of these things down actually. It's difficult because there's a lot of tweaking that you can do in this game. And I've tried to get it generally on those VR high settings or even might even be VR ultra thinking about it and then just tweaking them beyond that until I get a stable frame rate. And that's really what I've been doing this afternoon. And apologies, I can't remember precisely because it has been, I have been uh, doing changing a lot of settings. But yeah, so we go back down to HMD image quality and uh, 1.25. And now we've got a nice stable 72 frames per second in here, um, which is probably the most you can hope for. I did try uh, 90 FPS here as well. It was just becoming too much of a problem for my CPU. I could obviously lower resolution, lower settings on my GPU side, and there's a few settings you can change to help your CPU, but nothing really was making it a satisfactory experience for me so I decided to settle back down on 72 which to me in Elite Dangerous I don't like 72 in everything but there's certain titles where you accept it and it is the best overall sort of compromise that you can make um, but yeah this is looking really good performing really well at the moment I'm quite pleased with it my next stage is to try the legacy version of Elite Dangerous. That's what I'm really excited to do because part of me doesn't even care about the live game anymore. I think I, I just want to take VR performance and VR fidelity, which I know I can push up much further in the legacy version of Elite Dangerous uh, rather than the live game, the 4.0 edition of uh, Odyssey. And so that's what I plan next time. Somebody did request stations with my RTX 5080 in VR just to see how it runs. And this is sort of the best I can get. This is sort of the best um, I can do with minor tweaking this afternoon for an hour or so. And hopefully uh, this helps some people out. I know that people like to give um, advice in the comments and things like that. And that's, of course, welcome. And it will help people out uh, who read those comments as well. Um, I've tried a lot of things in the past with this game. Of course, Open Composite, I've tried that. Um, and there's lots of different things. So I'm going to continue to look into it. If you want to comment, uh, leave a bit of advice, the best settings to maximise performance while not ruining fidelity too much, then of course that's appreciated both for me and for other people that might read them. So go ahead. But uh, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.